Good morning, you're joining us. It's half past six. We're in Lautra and it's a lovely dawn, calm sea and uh, a lovely sky, pink sky. I'm setting out with the girls, left Finn and Mum in bed. So we thought we'd set out early and we'd try and walk up to the old ruin at Castle Oria, Oria which I think is a bit of a road walk and then a track and then who knows if we can find the, uh, the ruins or not. But um, it's a good walk anyway and we reckon we can be up, I mean, it's about five kilometres, we reckon we can be up there and back in time for a lovely breakfast, treat ourselves when we get back. So let's see how we get on. The hot springs and the hot water comes out underneath the church in there. So for anyone thinking of doing this walk, once you go past the bakery, which doesn't seem to be operating, I suppose it's Sunday morning, so we're all still in bed, we're not going to be opening. You go past the bakery, over the little bridge to the right side of the non-existent river, and then you turn right. It's a good sign, footpath number one. You can just see across the field, across the fig trees, across the other trees. You can actually see there's a crop in the field being harvested there. If it all went green, it could be the Lake District, couldn't it? Dry stone walls. We've now joined the path. So we've left the road and that's looking back to the port. Cut out the hairpin, starting to climb past the chickens, the sheep, the cocks are all crowing. That's the path and back on the road. Worth getting up early for. Come on, girls. Little church on top of the hill there. Party's well, being slowed down by the girls taking dawn pictures. It's the first time Hannah's appreciated seeing what morning looks like. It's quite a new, novel experience for you, Han. A novel experience finding out what the uh, morning looks like. The big orange thing in the sky. down into Lautra, which is, see our hotel there, just down bottom right, to the bay, very calm, no wind yet. And up on the skyline there's Cora, it's the capital we went to yesterday by bus. We've walked up, off the road, going up a dirt track. Unfortunately, we can now see a footpath marker. So we followed a sign wheel to the Castro and we're just going to stop, have a drink of water, replenish ourselves for the final assault, I hope. Close up view of our target. Interesting stone, it looks like a, it's now on its side, I think it was up the other way. I imagine they stuck posts through that as a way of 
locking the gate. Let's go around. It's like a Crusader castle, isn't it? It's fantastic. Looking back, once we've come, looking south. My support team. I wouldn't clang it. Is it eight o'clock yet? Uh, two minutes two. Two minutes two. Wait till eight o'clock and do a clang. <laughs> Don't go near the edge. Let's put you back down to Lantra. Looking across to Syros, I suspect. Well, we made it. Eight o'clock in the morning. This was the town. Well, good morning, everyone. We made it. It's quite windy up here, so I hope you can ho hear me and um, keep the camera steady. Um, so it's, we're here for eight o'clock. We were going to ring the bell on the church. I thought, well, that might be summon people in an emergency. But this is the little town on the top. There were, it was inhabited till about 1597 when the pirates of Barbarossa tricked their way into the, into the city or the town. One Turk was disguised as a, an old lady and the princess, the king's daughter, felt sorry for her and ordered that the gates of the town be opened, which they did, and then the pirates just flocked in and killed everyone. So in about 1600 they thought, hmm, actually, Let's go and move our, our town a bit further inland. So whether the trail tells true or not, I don't know, but it's never been excavated up here. So we're just picking our way amongst the ruins. We're gonna sit down and have some breakfast. I have to say, fair play to carry more sandals. I bought these sandals, trekking sandals, and uh, they're cheap and cheerful and go outdoors but uh, they've certainly done the job I'll show you them there you go leather and neoprene sandal and, uh, they've done the job because they're very unbroken ground here and they've uh, they've worked gives you a buzz to think of everyone still lying in their beds back in the hotel and they're up here the Greeks are missing a trick Ideal tourist destination. Well, people go all the way to Machu Picchu. Oh, it goes it goes all the way down there. This town. Isn't it? Really odd to think of people living up here. What they did for water. I suppose they collected it in cisterns. Still got the roof on this. It looks like the chapel, doesn't it? If you look carefully, you can still see the paintings on the wall, the signs of the cross, the looks of things, stations of the cross I should say. I found the cistern, steps down to the well. Well, just have to put a new battery in. I don't know if you can see but either side Coming close, whoops, for that wobbling. Just see the inscription across there. A small doorway. Let's keep 
keep out of the wind, I'd imagine. Just found a piece of pot. In the wall. It really is quite extensive. It goes right down to the cliff edge. It extends right to the cliff edge, but I'm too scared to go down there because the rocks are so unconsolidated. One slip and whole lot could come down. Banana. There's some water there for you. Thank you. Anything inside the church? What a view, what a breakfast. Well done. It's a better view in the hotel restaurant. And we're the only ones up here. Hello, Mum. Stood in bed. Put on the screen. There's a marathon or a twix if you want. Mm. Or salt arms. Salt arms there? Huh? Yes, please. No? Yes, please. All the way from England. That church was full of these. <laughs> Follow us up, eh? 